we're uh, uh, waiting for some folks to show up. Um, but in the, the meantime, uh, my name is Andrew. I'm the editorial director of Fine Home Building. Uh, I'm excited to uh, be able to be here and pre uh, present the Wall Assembly Sweet 16 contest. Uh, so we've got uh, Travis Brungart, uh, Connor Malloy, and uh, Etienne from, from SEGA joining us um, to talk about what makes a high performance wall assembly and to share a little bit more about the contest. So uh, with that, I'll let you let you take it away. Wonderful, thanks, Andrew. So it's so great to, to be here and share you know, a bit about what we've been up to to launch the third annual version of the Wall Assembly Suite 16. This is a, a great wall, really, really building science competition geared to any skilled trade, architectural or design student in North America. If you're in high school, if you're in college, if you're in your university and you're designing and think about wall assemblies, you're learning carpentry, you're learning how to build continuous air barriers. This is a place for you to share your ideas. And you know, we'll talk today about a bit about the competition itself, how to apply some of the, uh, the people sponsoring the competition, which provide for amazing prizes in both cash and education. Um, so why don't we start to talk a bit about, Travis, maybe you can give us just the history of how this first started and then how we pivoted to be focused on students. Yeah, yeah, that would be fantastic. So uh, a couple years ago, when there was not any college basketball to be had, uh, we decided to have a sweet 16 of our own. And Kansas City BS and Beer launched a competition through Instagram that was kind of a glorified popularity contest. It was by popular vote. There was no formal building or modeling of the walls. Just submit your wall assembly and we will pit you head to head with another wall assembly and then we'll have Instagram voting and we'll have the rounds just like they do in the, the American basketball tournament, for the NCAA. And uh, it was a great competition. It was a lot of fun. We had good engagement. People from all over the U.S. were able to uh, kind of cast their vote and have that be heard. But at the end of it all, uh, we had Mike Maines and Ben Bogey decide that, gosh, there's not really a huge benefit between either one of us winning it. What we'd really like to do is make sure that it makes a difference for the students out there. And one of the competitors in the competition was Matt Blomquist, who runs the Taylorville, Taylorville Illinois uh, High School Building Trades Program. And so they decided to go ahead and send him the, uh, it was, it's a boxing belt, you know, World Wrestling Federation style belt. Uh, they sent that to him as the prize uh, and created the first honorary winner for uh, a student program. So then the second year, uh, Connor, you reached out to me and said, hey, I'm really excited about this program. And I said, I don't want to do it. <laughs> it was a lot of work and I'm really tired and I don't know if I have time. And you very generously said, well, gosh, I really think it would be a great opportunity for a lot of the college and high school programs who care about design and building to really be able to engage uh, that community and sort of work it as part of your curriculum. And I said, that sounds wonderful, but again, I'm really tired and very busy. And you said, how about if I do all the work? And I said, now I'm in. So that's when I kind of handed it off to you, Connor. You want to take it from there for last year's competition? Yeah, so yeah, as Trevor said, we launched last year with a student focus. And this becomes really a vehicle to celebrate building science for, for designs for building students and architectural students. Many other schools, whether it's fashion or design photography, you have year in shows, places to showcase your work, there's competitions and skilled trades needs a vehicle to do that. So this is a, a student focused wall assembly challenge. Last year, we came up with a bit more structure than just a popularity contest. We wanted to make sure that for any student, there was a clear description of how your submission might be, might be voted uh, against. You're clear in the submission criteria and it's open to any student from any climate zone. So anywhere in North America, no matter where you are, you can tell us, okay, the goals of my project are X, my air barrier goal is, is Y, and you can say my labor market is actually quite proficient at offsite construction. I'm gonna focus on some prefabrication. My labor market has really skilled in advanced framing on site. So my assembly makes use of these skills. So it allows for anyone really to submit something, whether it is a SketchUp model, um, as we've seen a second from last year, physical models you build in the shop with your class or even sketches um, that you wanna submit. So anything that shares your ideas is what we're here to support. And the, the competition breaks down your wall into six different categories from just how buildability, sort of buildable it is, 
uh, thermal performance, uh, durability, all the things we think about when we think about holistic wall um, assembly when we built on site. So what we can do maybe is we can jump into, before we explain kind of how this year's competition works is I'll just keep a sense of last year, Andrew, I'm gonna share a screen. And all of what's so nice about the work that last year's students did and last year's judges did is all of this is available to anyone who wants to see what an example submission might look like and also see the judges feedback from last year. So the competition is hosted at wallassembly.com. And within the, the site itself, we'll go through this year's prizes. The benefit here is if you click on the 2021 competition, so last year, you can see all of the, the final eight submissions from the 16. You can see where they were, came from, which climate zone. In this case, we have a submission from a college. The second is from a university, from an architectural student. Third is from a high school group from Brooklyn uh, who won the competition. So it really is not about whether your institution teaches building science. All of your ideas are relevant and they should be discussed. So all the submissions are here for you to see. And if you want to see the actual live voting for how those submissions did from the judges and see their feedback, you can actually see the live judging board that we used. So all the submissions were put into a competition bracket. We paired them pretty much against the same climate zone. So things were relevant. So a lot of climate zone five and four, some from zone one and three. Um, so those are paired together. And we can see as the bracket narrows down from quarterfinals to semifinals to finals, you can zoom in and see in any instance for all of our illustrious seven judges with the color of their sticky, all of their comments were left on the submissions. So we can zoom in here and see, for instance, from this high school student from Brooklyn, all of the amazing critique that Christine Williamson did of a big, or a big size fight club wrote about their applications. So we're learning from past submissions, learning how your judges actually critique your work. You're in an excellent position this year to create a really great assembly. You can also see against the actual rubric itself that they use for voting, we turned each judge into a little, little picture so you can see how they voted on each, on each category. So maybe you find a judge who has a building background like Ben, ben Bogey votes differently on uh, buildability than maybe an architect does. Maybe the architecture group votes differently on, on the cost of the wall or on the durability of the wall against maybe some of the carpenters who did some of the voting or the builders who did voting. So all this is here for you to kind of look at and get an idea of how things are voted against, what the feedback is like, and towards the winner, really what made a winning wall assembly. So all that is here for your, for your benefit. This year, as we kind of grew the competition and had amazing sponsor support, which we'll hear from Etienne from Sega in a second, the prizes have gone up almost threefold from what they were last year. So when we look at the first prize winner, there is $1,000 cash USD. There is a fully paid ride to complete your Passive House tradespersons course with Passive House Canada, including the exam fees. We have um, in-person training for Walkwell at your school and also complimentary one-year memberships to Fine Home Building and Green Building Advisor. Second prize is $500 in cash USD full Passive House Tradesperson's course, again, paid by Passive House Canada, and also memberships to Fine Home Building and Green Building Advisor. And because of the way the bracket works, there's not just a third prize, there's a third and fourth prize. So both third and fourth receive 250 USD, plus uh, their partial Tradesperson's course from Passive House Canada with an $1,800 Canadian dollar value, um, and memberships to Fine Home Building and Green Building Advisor but we had way more sponsor support than we ever could imagine and we left over money so what we've created is an education award so if you are a student who submits and you do not make the top four you are still eligible for up to almost four thousand usd in education credits so part of your submission will contain a bit of a bio about what your goals are in your career whether it's design skilled trade or architecture and you have some training you want to complete and you want some funding to help you do that, there's $4,000 here earmarked for to help you do that. So judges and us organizing the competition will decide, you know, just despite not winning, whether you have merit and we can help you get to get to your goals. So lots of lots of great stuff on wallassembly.com.
So why don't we jump into, if it makes sense to introduce some of our platinum sponsors, which we have two. Uh, Etienne, do you want to share about a bit about SIGA and your support of the competition? Absolutely, yeah, I would love to. Thank you very much, uh, Connor. And, and really, I, I want to applaud uh, your guys' effort. This is amazing. This is really, really cool. I love the fact that you share last year's learnings. What a great resource. And yeah, hey, if you're out there, submit the wall, whatever it is. I mean, uh, yeah, go, go get those credits. That's that's a good one. Yeah, so um, quickly to my person, my name is Etienne. I am the CEO of SIGA North America. Um, I have a team in the US and in Canada. And uh, SIGA has been a very long supporter of various uh, trade organization, trade schools, and just the industry in general. Um, Connor asked me to speak about three things. The first one is just give a quick intro who SIGA is. Secondly, tell us why you are supporting such a, a, a competition. And then, of course, what are the prizes? And I figured there's no better way than to, to do a very quick um, presentation for you guys. So I hope you can see my screen. Do I get a nod? I do. OK, fantastic. Well, welcome. So at SIGA, we have a vision. We strive for a world of zero energy loss buildings. So what does that mean? We really envision a world where we build buildings that only need as much energy as um, needed. And not, we don't wanna heat the house in winter, open our windows, no one would ever do that. But to be honest with you, we often leave our walls, our, our roofs and or our foundation connection somehow open. So that's where air tightness really comes into uh, the game. Um, Sega has been around since 1966. Um, we are active in a total of 40 countries. And in the heart of Europe is Switzerland. That's also where I'm from. And what's also made there um, is our tape. So everything that we make is produced with sunlight, very sustainable, uh, because we think just using the product to be more sustainable isn't enough. The product itself needs to be sustainable. Last slide on Sika. What do we actually manufacture and produce and distribute here in North America? We have a whole portfolio of weather resistive barriers. So here, air tightness and weather protection is important, really important for a wall. Not, water is the first thing you need to address. If you don't solve water, don't worry about air or vapor uh, or, or any of the other things that can actually endanger your wall. Okay, so that's that part. Then we have smart vapor retarders, very common in um, passive house assemblies. We see it if used with blowing cellulose or some sort of um, uh, uh, insulation that needs an air tightness layer to really perform very well. Uh, then we make a lot of tapes and we are also now are in the mass timber uh, industry, mass timber market with a temporary waterproof. Okay, so that's a little bit Sega in a nutshell. Um, now, the question is, why do we support uh, the Sweet 16 wall assembly? Well, first of all, we have a social responsibility as a company to help North America, and here in this case, the US in particular, um, with a huge challenge. There is a big, big labor shortage in North America. Some estimates say over 650,000 additional qualified and skilled crafts professional are needed in 2022 alone, okay? And I will come back to that slide in a bit, but what can we do? Um, well, we can help to educate people. And that's something we have been doing for a long, long time across the world. Uh, I brought to you um, a few young lads here from Switzerland. This is from a trade school, um, really cool facility. Um, I, but I know Connor, you have a nice place too, uh, up in Toronto, but just give you a few impression. Um, now talking about Connor and George Brown, um, we of course support and partner with different university programs. The Taylorville High School was mentioned today. We are supporting them. If you are currently enrolled in a school or you run a school or a program, reach out to me. We are very happy to talk about how we can do that. It can be a college, it can be a high school. It doesn't matter so much. Reach out. Reach out not just to me, reach out to the industry. You will be surprised how many people are actually there to help if you just tell them that you're open for that. Okay. 
Now, um, I also have something for you, some help, and something that I would like to invite everyone in this competition. We at SEGA took training to the next level. We actually run two training centers here in North America. One of them is located in Salem, New Hampshire. That's about a 30 minute drive from Boston. You can see there we have real size mock-ups, a great learning uh, environment. And guess what? Next course is coming up. We still have open spaces. So April 29th, in preparation, you can review your wall with us. I didn't read in the rules. You can consult with Siga, so you should be fine. Um, so if you're in the US near there, go there. If you're in Canada, British Columbia, good news as well. We have a, a training center there too that we run. And there is a training coming up April 21st. Now I know not everyone can hop on a plane, but rest assured, I also have something for all of those of you who can't just fly somewhere to take a training. We as well have pre-recorded webinars. So I just want to invite you, visit our page, a lot of technical drawings, details, things that can help. Um, we didn't win the last year's uh, challenge, but uh, we were a very strong contender. So, you know, that's good to know. Okay, so the last two slides. So my biggest message to you is this. High demand and the low supply equals high prices. Now, why do I say this? This labor shortage is not a short-term problem. You can see we have had a labor shortage, yeah, basically since 2000. So in 2018, the two curves were relatively close, right? The construction uh, spending and employment, those were relatively close. But now there's a big gap. And you've probably heard of the aging workforce. A lot of skilled laborers are about to retire. The situation is not getting better. So what does that mean? Start the business, learn the trades. This is a really, really good industry to go into and to be in. So don't get flashed by you know, fancy job titles or big names. If you want to become an entrepreneur, you want to make your own business, construction will be a good home. And if you think, oh, I'd rather work with computers, rest assured, it can be extremely technical. And especially when you're going to offsite. So I really want to make kind of this pitch for you. If you're already industry, pull through and, and, and really explore. There's a lot to offer. Now I want to thank not just uh, Fine Home Builder Building, but also all the other sponsors. I got a little bit of a spotlight, but there are so many great people out there who support this message. And I'm going to end with an important hashtag, hashtag keep craft alive. And that's what we love and support. Um, yes, we donated some money, we donate some product, but really most important, let's have fun, everyone. And I look forward to seeing your walls. Thank you. Thank you, Etienne. That was awesome. Uh, great to have you as a, a participating sponsor. Again, this is really, um, your, your generosity is touching and uh, we appreciate the outpouring of generosity from all of our sponsors, but it's great to have you uh, as a presenting sponsor here with us today. So thank you so much for that. We would also probably uh, benefit from talking about some of the other uh, sponsors. Were we, were we gonna have Louise with us today or no? Yeah, Louise is looking to join, but uh, might miss, miss the timing of the show. So oh, okay. We can, uh, I can speak to Passos Canada and you can maybe highlight to other sponsors uh, for Travis. Sure. That'd be great. So what's so exciting about what um, our partner just saying is education is key to help get to the next level. We can design buildings that are high performing, constructing those on site with weather and conditions and how that perfect wall isn't perfectly straight. It has cantilevers and bumps and parapets. Knowing how to detail is really critical. So our other platinum sponsor is, is Passos Canada. They're a, a certified training facility in Canada. And really for any American who wins the competition can also participate through some of the online training and classes to be certified as a passive house trades person. So Passos Canada from, from Louise wanted to share that Passos Canada is pleased to support such an initiative as we believe an event, an, an event of this magnitude is able to do a lot of good for our planet and the future generation. Passos Canada is a national nonprofit professional association advocating for the Passive House High Performance Building Standard. Passive House is recognized internationally as the optimal way to build healthy, climate resilient, affordable, and energy efficient residential, institutional, 
and commercial buildings through all stages of design, construction, and livability. So this is a wonderful organization if you want to learn more about pursuing high performance building, whether that's on site as an HVAC professional, learning how to duct seal, working as a, a framing company or framer, uh, looking to understand how to install those exterior air barriers for continuity while you're framing. So there are courses to become a certified passive house designer, certified passive house tradesperson, which really speaks to what this competition is about is connecting the building with the actual design for performance. So winners of the, the first prize will get the complete, um, or there's an online course or you take the in-person course if you're in Canada as an $1,800 value, they'll also pay for your exam preparation and your exam fees with the Pass House Institute. They wanted to make sure that not just the first prize winner receives that large prize, but also there are additional credits for courses to do online or in person, it's up to you based on your location, uh, whether that's in second prize, third or fourth. So that's Passive Canada. I want to learn more about them. It's passivecanada.ca. And Travis, you want to share some other sponsors with us? I'll pull. Them yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would be happy to talk about Rockwell just because I talk about them a lot. They're uh, a product that we use all the time uh, and have for over a decade. Uh, and they're always quick to jump on anything that BS and beer is supporting. So our good friends, Carol and Dan Edelman over there, were quick to jump on as a gold sponsor for this. And they sponsored last year as well. Uh, so we're great to, grateful to have their support again. Um, Passive House Accelerator is a, a group of Passive House enthusiasts who are promoting uh, Passive House building practices uh, throughout the nation. And they meet weekly on Tuesdays. They have Tech Tuesdays. On Wednesday, they have their regular uh, weekly meeting, all virtual, so you can get involved with that. And they were also quick to support um, and uh, our friends, Sean St. Amour, who is one of our judges this year, uh, and Mark Willie, who's heavily involved with both Tech Tuesday and the regular Wednesday show. Uh, they have been fantastic promotional supporters. Uh, I'm not able to speak to Simple Life. Connor, do you have familiarity with that program at all? Yeah, so this is the fun thing about this second year is we started to really learn from more people who wanted to support students. So Simple Life is a local builder in Ontario. They are an offsite prefabricated um, um, envelope company. So they frame walls in Coburg, Ontario. They deliver them to your site, whether you're a builder or you're building as a client, fully insulated with interior uh, vapor control and exterior air and WRB installed, crane them into place. They can install your windows for you as well and blow door test before they leave to ensure they're giving you an airtight assembly. Wonderful nice. company, really small, jumped on board without a question. The other is Hummingbird Hill Homes. They're a renovation and builder based in Oakville, Ontario. So again, right near George Brown College. Leading company really for performance-based building, whether it's renovation or new home construction. They frame on site. And additionally, they've just opened their own um, offsite panelized factory. So they will panelize their own projects. And if you're a builder looking for some offsite fabrication, they're taking other clients to build your work as well. Nice. Uh, well, I don't know a ton about Baxter we architecture firm, but I know that they're heavily involved with the Passive House Accelerator. I know they're a leading sponsor of that organization. I know that Mike Lingui has frequently been published over the years in, uh, in Fine Home Building Magazine and others. So I've learned from him previously. Uh, and I also know that Dylan Ingui was our winner uh, last year with Giancarlo. They're, they were the winning submission. Uh, so I think there's a, a pretty good, strong bloodline there uh, of, of high performance building and design. Uh, and I can also speak to Alpen Windows. Uh, that's a company in Denver, Colorado, or very near Denver, Colorado, uh, and they make a, a high performance uh, window assembly as well as some doors. They also were one of the pioneers in the thin glass technology for, uh, for triple glazed units. And we've been using those windows for a number of years. We're really happy with that product and we're happy to have their support uh, for this competition as well. For our silver sponsors, uh, EMU Building Systems, we were very fortunate last year to have uh, Enrico Bonolari. I got it right. Got I've it. been working on that one. <laughs> Enrico, I always get the first name right, but I'm always afraid I'm going to botch Bonolari. Uh, he is uh, a fantastic resource for us, as is Mariana Pickering, the two partners that lead EMU Systems. Uh, they are also in the Denver area of Colorado. I think they're a little further north and west, uh, but for a time they were in Denver. And they offer passive house training. Uh, in a week's time, you can uh, spend with them getting your certified passive house tradesperson. 
uh, if you want to visit with them in person or virtually, you can do it that way. Uh, they also offer the Passive Pod workshops, which Joe and I, my partner at Catalyst, have been uh, drooling over for a couple of years and just haven't made the schedule work yet. But they really offer some amazing hands-on um, hands trainings to basically create these assemblies, essentially what our students are doing, design and build. And then they also go through the steps of testing and taking apart. So it, it's really a, a wonderful uh, service that they offer. And just to be once again, uh, thankful to en Enrico for his services last year, he went ahead and offered uh, Woofy analysis thermal modeling on all of the finalists so that our judges could be better informed about the performance of last year's assemblies. And I think we were gonna ask him to review that again. Are we, are we doing that again, Connor? So both EMU Systems and also Rockwell has offered full Woofy modeling. Of, of course. Of, of the top four. So really gives a lot of insight into really the nerdy details, but really the performance, thermal performance of, of, of those assemblies. Fantastic. Now offsite dirt, I'm not as close with, but I know that my friend, Mark Willie, who is again, uh, through Passive House Accelerator, he spends a lot of time working with them. Uh, I'm not super familiar with their operation. Obviously I'm assuming it's a, an offsite construction services uh, setup, uh, but I do know a lot about Sashco. Uh, again, for whatever reason, everyone in Colorado is fantastic. So Sashco is a, a sealant company um, just outside of Denver. They're making all sorts of high performance sealants. Uh, we had Nathan Ferraro with us yesterday for our local BS in beer talking about specifically the, the technologies that they use to make these sealants durable and uh, how to improve upon the performance of your assemblies with that product. So we're very grateful to have their sponsor sponsorship as well. Uh, of course, we'd be remiss to get through this without mentioning uh, fine home building, which of course we're, uh, we're utilizing the, the wonderful services of Andrew and his team to share this with you now. But of course, they're also offering their subscriptions to the magazine, as well as to Green Building Advisor, both of which are tremendous resources for anyone who ever wants to build anything better uh, at all. Would you like to say anything, Andrew, about uh, your excitement about working with this? Uh, so, you know, like like we've all been talking about, um, you know, education is super important. You know, high performance is getting much more important. And um, I'm excited to be able to offer offer complimentary subscriptions to anyone who participates. So um, that's that's fantastic. Um, we do have uh, one question about high performance uh, in, in the chat. And I think, you know, we, we can open the floor a little bit to have have other conversations uh, because we've got some some experts with us here. So uh, uh, Rob has asked, you know, does the criteria for high performance include uh, acoustic performance? You know, he's thinking particularly about higher density housing and, and multifamily stuff. We haven't discussed that previously, but I, I do think that uh, there, there are certainly some benefits to, some acoustic benefits to building high performance in that as soon as you start limiting uh, air and packing walls full of uh, thermal insulation, you often get a, a sound benefit from that. Higher performing windows frequently uh, perform better acoustically. Uh, but I don't think we have an individual criteria that just addresses uh, sound quality or audio experience. That's a, that's a good suggestion for next year. I think we should leave the criteria where it is for now. Connor, you've done an excellent job on the site. <laughs> the rubric is beautiful, but we're always trying to improve. Every year, we're going to try and make this better. Uh, and I think that's, that's worthwhile to consider. Thank you. That's a great idea. It's a wonderful idea. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Thinking about wall assemblies, you know, our readership loves wall assemblies, diagrams, illustrations. Um, you know, I'm I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the winners last year. Maybe you know what was what was kind of surprising. Were there any wall assemblies you you hadn't thought of before or, or hadn't really considered? Because uh, especially I think as a builder or where you live, like you're just focused on one climate zone. Well, that's really been a challenge uh, for us in the past. I mean, obviously in the first year where it was a, a more informal, uh, less rigidly judged competition, uh, the comparisons from one climate zone to the other, we, we were considering that criteria, but really it was in the second year when Connor got involved and really established this Miro board and the, frankly, the influence of the judges. We were very fortunate to have some excellent judges, which we should probably review that as well uh, before we move too much further. But each judge is comparing the wall assembly against its own climate, as opposed to just against another assembly, because obviously an assembly 
uh, designed for climate zone three is going to perform very poorly in climate zone eight and vice versa. So we've tried to address that with, uh, well, really through, through the rubric that Connor's established. And it might make sense to screen share a little bit. We can talk about where we got to last year, uh, our winners, they actually had a huge bit of it from, it was a remodeled uh, assembly. So it was an existing structure, which is obviously a huge carbon step forward. If you're not having to start with the foundation, you're already miles ahead on, on your carbon footprint. Uh, and with Chris Magwood's involvement last year, I, I know I mentioned Enrico, but we also had Chris Magwood uh, of Beam, uh, who did a full cradle to cradle carbon analysis of all the assemblies. And that became a part of the judging criteria as well. So of the assemblies that we reviewed last year, or that, that were judged last year is a more accurate way to say that, um, we had, I believe, four or five different climate zones represented. And from those, we had, I would consider, pretty diverse approaches. Um, the, the most successful of them were both low carbon and high performance. Uh, but I don't know, without really going back and running down each one, uh, yeah, there we go. Why don't you take it over here? Yeah, let's, let's talk high level here. So I think what's really exciting about things like this, again, so we're, we're in Toronto, so um, climate zone 5A. And what's so interesting about what we think is we're in a little microcosm. We see walls around us. We see assemblies, or assemblies around us, different buildings constructing, but learning what a student and a builder or architecture student in climate zone 3 might put together and climate zone 1 might put together. Each climate zone and each student expressed a goal for, for themselves. So we had a lot of diversity. So from, and again, it shows you what you can submit for this year's competition. So in the first bracket, we had a retrofit. So of a multifamily masonry building in New York. And so climate zone 4A, we put that against a retrofit, another retrofit from Toronto, from a student at the University of Toronto um, in climate zone 5A. This is a, a residential retrofit to a, a one-story bungalow. Very different approaches in, the, in their approach and their uh, materiality. So one approach was completely, basically modification to the exterior of the building, retaining all the plaster finishes, the existing masonry structure, and adding the control layers to the exterior. That progressed quite well through the rest of the dialogue because of its, uh, its simplicity in the approach and the fact that it was a retrofit versus new. That, that played quite well in terms of the commentary. Looking at some of the retrofits, um, the other retrofit in Toronto was the single family. It was a bit of a hybrid. We, it was a, almost like a gut renovation of a, of a, a wood framed building. There was both new insulation added to the interior, some exterior insulation added as well. Complications as you have existing uh, rim joists and first floor uh, floor plates as the making those connections for continuity is quite challenging. So, but getting the commentary, again, the comments on this project are just extensive to read from all of the excellent judges. Um, as we got down to the next bracket, we had uh, two submissions from, so climb zone 5A, uh, this was out of Boston, I believe. We had a climb zone 4A uh, from Toronto as well. Two different approaches here to uh, a one-story um, structure for a high-performance wall. This is a Larson truss built with uh, T-studs, both for the structure and for the additional insulation depth on the exterior. It made use of you know, new insulation products like Havenlock wool, the, uh, the wool-based product for insulation. Um, others made use of rock wool, blown-in insulation. We had Gutex, we had rock wool comfort board. There was CLT mass timber, huge diversity in what the approaches are and basic simple graphics. So the students would express in their description really uh, what their goals are. Not every goal of a high performance assembly has to be built to a passive standard. It's based on what your local market demands to be high performance. That's different for me in Toronto as it might be for Travis in Kansas City um, and same for you, Andrew, in, in, in the Northeast. As we got down to, um, this is from Ashley Taylorville from uh, our colleague Matt's class. So we have a, a stem wall with, a, I think they have a crawl space in this house. Uh, wood, floor, right, wood frame TGI with, uh, again, a T-stud, the, the completely foam-filled team stud for thermal bridging. And then they have a, a raised seal truss um, on the roof assembly with, I think, blown in, yeah, blown in cellulose uh, to 18 inches with a nice little detail here with um, zip sheathing coming under to connect 
the uh, air barrier and vapor control layer at the ceiling level with a um, service cavity. Really, really nice ideas here. And I think what we kind of talked about earlier was nothing in here is brand new from a spaceship. These are ideas that the building community and publications like Fine Home Building publish just amazing things. This article just from the February, March edition on air barrier materials and design, and then the concrete free assemblies. These are things for you to knowledge should be shared. So whether it's a builder and their approach, you're reading Steve Basic's work, you're looking at Ben Bogie's work. This is all amazing stuff for you to, to learn from. Um, this next assembly was also from Toronto, designed as a, a new construction. This made use of some materials that uh, not many, myself included, had seen before. Under slab, they were insulated with gravel, which is an expanded uh, glass product. So dealing with both the drainage plane and the sub-slab insulation. They kind of upped their game with a, a 15 mil poly from company Stego. Um, and then their exterior stem wall was not just concrete block, it's material called uh, Nexum, previously called Duracell. So a wood fiber-based product. And the actual interior of that masonry unit is insulated with rock wool. So wonderful product. They then had a T-stud uh, bare naked wall and used hemp insulation and some Sega products on the interior for smart vapor management. And again, lots of raised steel trusses here and some details to wrap the exterior WRBs up and over that wall to the interior under that raised steel truss. And then in this case, uh, some exterior insulation with uh, some wood-based fiberboard from a company in Quebec. Down at the bottom, some much more substantial approaches in their, in their approach. This is a CLT wall where this student actually perceived, sorry, proceeded with a CLT floor and then had Gutex underneath of that. They had CLT wall and CLT roof, laminated Gutex on the exterior, then had Debra B and their strapping and then wrapped that up the enclosure for a complete continuous uh, approach. Now, on paper, this wall looks amazing. The feedback here is really positive, but you also get nailed down on buildability. Ontario, for instance, has one large CLT plant. If you're not near it, maybe your shipping costs are quite substantial. Maybe your crane rates are hard. Maybe you have to fly in people to help you assemble. So maybe not the most buildable for your zone, but maybe just quite well on performance. So it's really a balance between the six criteria, durability, buildability, um, et cetera. In the last bracket, we had two walls from certainly warmer climates. So it's climate zone 3C. Uh, on the West Coast and climate zone 4 Really simple approach in this submission called the contrarian. It's a two by six wall, uses uh, drywall as the interior air barrier. And I think they use a paint finish as their vapor control on the exterior, it's a painted plywood for the WRB. And as we get down to the last assembly here, we have uh, again, another Larson truss. So uh, stem wall with an insulated um, uh, foundation wall. Two by six wall, Larson truss on the exterior. Um, and this one, for instance, just dropped all the scoring is within half a point to two points of each other. They're very close assemblies. This one received feedback on the fact that it did not make use of a raised seal truss and therefore had some insulation. There's a key more towards the eaves. You got lower depths to get the ventilation to work through your through your uh, rafters. And that those small little points and critiques are the things that impact these, these submissions. So wonderful things to learn. My site is slow to load here, so I'll stop sharing. I think it's worth pointing out that one of the beautiful things about the competition is while there is a, obviously a huge benefit to the specific product that you choose, um, it's not just about the products. It truly is about the assembly. If you, if you have something great and you don't use it properly, like there's a huge efficiency in building with trusses. You've got, uh, you know, less wood material in the truss itself than you would in a large dimensional lumber frame, stick framed roof. Uh, but if you, if you haven't designed that truss properly to have the substantial uh, raised heel that you were just talking about, then your product hasn't given you the full benefit. So it, it's, it's a holistic approach. It's the, the beauty of this competition is that you have access to these brilliant judges who will, will help you out with this. They're really, they're trying to show you the best possible way, not just with selecting the right product, but using that product in the best way and to its fullest. So we saw some great, great materials in there with the CLT, the Gutex, the, the fantastic Sega uh, weather barriers that we talked about earlier. 
all of those things, the Rockwell insulation, the gravel, these are great products. And if you use them properly in the right place, you can really advance the performance of your system, but it's not just products. You can't just throw money at the system. You have to understand exactly where to get the best bang for your buck on that. And I really appreciate that as a, you know, these humble Midwest builders that, that we claim to be, we, we don't always throw the largest dollar figure onto the system. We try to be really focused with using the proper detail and that's how you really provide the value. And that really is part of the, the, the judging criteria, or at least that's the intent. Because uh, while a CLT floor system is beautiful and very carbon friendly in terms of, well, it wasn't concrete, it's wood. That's, yeah, that's great. But to your point earlier, Connor, if you have to have a giant crane on site to move that, and if you're trucking it or training it across the country, those things all weigh into that. And I think that give and take is what really advances the student's learning or at least their understanding of these systems, because it really is a complex system that they're putting together here. It's a beautiful relationship. So, uh, you know, we're, we're coming up on time here, but I think we should definitely talk about uh, the judges, because these are some fantastic folks to know in the industry, and I would love to be able to have them evaluate my work too, you know? Absolutely. Connor, if your site's still slow, I've got mine up, I can talk, I just can't show. Yeah, uh, let, me, let me post it here. So we were very fortunate that we have great relationships in the industry, not just with sponsors like ATN and SEGA, but also with the, the wisdom, the curators of, of the building science knowledge, as Steve Basic says. We have Steve Basic, who if you don't know him, my gosh, I can't believe he found this webinar. Uh, he's all over the place, uh, Unbuilt It podcast. He's written for JLC. He's written for Fine Home Building. Uh, most of the white papers on GBA, I think, are originally authored by him and BSC when he was there. Steve is an excellent resource, and he will always shoot you straight. You will never have any trouble figuring out where you stand with Steve. So we're grateful to have his support and his generous donation of his time to judge these assemblies. Christine Williamson, Building Science Fight Club. Uh, she's an excellent architect and building scientist who I don't think she, she does a lot of architectural work. Most of her work these days is consulting and teaching. Uh, but she does Building Science Fight Club on Instagram where you can learn a ton about different ways to manage water. Uh, I mean, really all the way through the system. And if you look back on last, year, last year's competition, you will see that her stickies include a tremendous amount of information to help the students. You want to take over, Connor? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's just about Christine. I mean, every comment these judges made in last year's competition, and you'll see this year when you submit, these are mini articles on your work. They're critiquing your ideas. So even if you don't win, the value you get from judges like these and the commentary during the voting process is, is, just, is just wonderful. And to kind of mix it up, to make sure, again, this competition for design students, architectural students, and building students, it's not just architects and building scientists looking at your work. We also have wonderful builders like Ben Bogey out of the Northeast, excellent builder I look up to and have had join my class. Um, looking at building science, someone who really is passionate about not just building high performance, but also learning from that process over time, installing uh, sensors for monitoring his own wall assemblies to so they and themselves, the builder can get better over time, share the knowledge with the, with the homeowner. Uh, ben writes for Fine Home Building and JLC and was just at JLC Live last week running the high performance clinic. I, I can't say enough about Ben. Sean St. Amour rounds out our Canadian, gives us one, one, of, one of seven Canadians here. Uh, Sean is out of, out of uh, BC, uh, previously a 475 as a director of education, uh, now works with a local building company, has a deep background in building science and on-site construction, and also teaches um, courses at British Columbia Institute of Technology. Excellent, excellent school I am jealous of in BC, teaches high performance. So Sean St. Amour is with us as well. And maybe you can speak to Emily and Jake. I will. Emily is a colleague of mine uh, who I get to work with, the good fortune of working with her, both her and Ben Bogey on uh, the BS and Beer Show every week with Kylie, uh, and of course, sponsored by Fine Home Building and GBA. Emily's an architect in Maine. She's also a teacher in her own right. Uh, I always mess up which university it is that she teaches at, but she is a fantastic resource and hosts the E3 podcast, uh, which I believe is publishing uh, twice a month. So you can learn a lot from Emily if you want to enroll in the college that she teaches at or just listen to her podcast or tune into the BS and Beer show. Uh, she is also the author of The Pretty Good House book, one of the authors, uh, which I believe will be arriving to my 
mailbox soon. I've pre-ordered. I recommend you do the same. Emily is fantastic. She's a great person. Uh, and most recently, I taught with her at IBS. So lots of good things to say about Emily. Um, Jake Bruton, an adequate friend, an excellent builder in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, Jake has uh, the good fortune of sharing the Unbuild It podcast with Peter Yost and Steve Basic. He's also a Build Show Network contributor, uh, a frequent writer for JLC and Fine Home Building. And uh, honestly, he's one of my better friends. So I, I actually think he's a little bit better than adequate, but I like to give him a little bit of a hard time here and there. And then our last judge, uh, Andrew, do you want to talk about our last judge? I, I'm going to get all weepy if I start talking about Mike Gurton. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> Mike Gurton is, is like the nicest, most humble, most, but like knowledge filled and passionate contributor, you know, former editor of Fine Home Building that I've met you know, uh, and I think especially his, his passion and his, he loves teaching and sharing his knowledge. And so I value every conversation I get to have, um, with Mike and I'm, I'm so glad he's a part of this because he, he brings a very real world pragmatic perspective, um, and so much experience. Um, he, it seems like he's anytime I've had a question or wanted to know how to do anything, he had three different ways to tell me how, how to do it and which one was the best. So uh, Mike, Mike is fantastic. Building Monk, a national <laughs> treasure. That's Mike Gurton. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, well, uh, I, I don't think we have any other questions other than, um, you know, how Ben Bogey appears on in, in person. So um, uh, with that, I wanted to thank you all for, for joining us um, on the podcast today. Very excited about this competition. Really looking forward to seeing wall assemblies uh, come in. Um, and any any parting thoughts for our our folks watching at home? Yeah, I, I would two two quick things really just to highlight is if you want to learn more about competition, you just visit wallassembly.com. There's a big glaring ticker to give you anxiety about when the due dates are. <laughs> right now, it's 23 days away. It's April 29th. Uh, end of day, so at 5 p.m. Um, get in before that submission date. And should you have questions before that, we're all here for you. Contact page, you can email us. You can hit us on Instagram um, as well. And there are many, many sponsors and uh, submission some students who submitted last year who offered to help. I have a past student who taught himself SketchUp over the summer and wants to help if you don't know. We have other uh, suppliers who are willing to talk to you about, as, as our colleague said, about materials, not just their own products, but just generally about con uh, continuity and how to join your floor to your wall, to your roof. These are all here for you. So if you are interested and passionate, but are just stuck on the what to do, that's where we can help you fill it in. You bring the passion and we can do the rest. Yeah, I would, I would also encourage people to think who they know who might want to be involved in this. I remember last year, Connor didn't have like 12,000 impressions on the website. We had a ton of people look at it, but we did not even, did we have over 16 submissions? I don't recall. It wasn't, it wasn't quite the competitive field that it could have been. There's a lot of money on the line here. This is a pretty big opportunity. Even if you don't think you're going to win, what do you have to lose? Like, I think get in the mix. If you know of a local school that has a building program, uh, keep it in mind, our winner last year was a high school student. This is not something that's exclusive to those that hold the keys to the kingdom and the hierarchy of existing academia. This is very much available to someone who is any, any student. I, I think, didn't we open it to non-traditional students or are we no? It so, is non-traditional. Yeah. One of the interests last year was when doing were continuing ed at a night school, taking architecture. So completely, if you are a student, it's really a non-professional, then you're open to submit to the competition. And in this mission guidelines, you can submit as an individual, as a group, or if you're a class, those are all completely possible. We want to remove the barrier to entry. There's no cost to enter for any student, high school, college, university. Any, any ideas are welcome. Etienne, would you mind reminding uh, students, prospective entrants, how they can get in touch with you to get a little help? Because I know you offered to help. Uh, let's, let's give them a quick, is it best to get to, at you through Build Tight on Instagram or where's the best way to get you? Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you want to reach out to me personally, Build Tide is a great way to do that uh, via Instagram. But the easiest, just go to um, You We have a function there, contact us, 
And you can uh, then find the person who is near your area, who has a very good understanding of your climate zone and requirements that are needed if you want to build in a certain climate. Um, I really want to challenge everyone and, and just say, I, I would really like to echo what Travis said. This is a huge learning opportunity. Your judges that you have, these are absolutely top-notch building experts. These guys can build hourly rates that you can dream of and we probably all can dream of. These are really, really high-end people that are going to look at your wall, evaluate it, share openly their feedback. That is really, really, really exciting. And, and so really, I want to encourage everyone, go out there, build a cool wall, make something that you are have a passion. If you have a passion about hemp, then build a hemp wall uh, or whatever floats your boat. So yeah, no, enjoy. This is uh, excellent. And thanks once again for all of you for putting that together. It's a pleasure. I would also say you don't have to be a, a CAD wizard. You don't have to know SketchUp. If you want to draw it on a piece of paper and take a picture of it and send it, we'll, we're reviewing these assemblies as equals. It doesn't have to be a fancy 3D fly through. I, I don't need to see that. What we really want our judges to be able to understand is what are you including? What are the components? How is it going together? What is your climate zone? What are you trying to achieve with your assembly? And then that's, that's what it's going to be judged on. So if, if you're dialed in at climate zone four uh, with a, a two by six wall and it doesn't have 16 different layers of outsolation and interior air barriers and all sorts of complexity, that's okay because you're going to win buildability. Your framer is stoked. Uh, there's no reason to, to take, don't take yourself out of the competition because you don't think that you understand the most complex assemblies. Let it be what you think it should be and we'll judge it on its own merit. We encourage all entrants, all students, anything that we can do to help, even if you don't win the competition, you win by getting, as ATN put it, uh, access to these people that are really top level. Uh, they're gonna help you to be better. And that's worth a lot more than even the prize money. Fantastic. Well, uh, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up here, but I wanted to say thanks, uh, Travis, Connor, and Etienne. Uh, it's been uh, hours flown by. I'm really excited to see some wall assemblies start coming in. And uh, we'll we'll see you on the next podcast. That sounds great. Thanks so much, right. Andrew. Thanks see you, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye.